So we're starting with derivatives. This is the first reading. I want you to write down the name in your notes, which is pricing and valuation of forward commitments. Now, what is the strategy for the reading? So there are two ways in which, uh, so my guess is for 2017 with the current syllabus, derivative might turn out to be one of the most difficult subjects out of the 10 or maybe at least second most because I, I still feel portfolio management is going to be a little more challenging. Now derivative is going to be challenging for those people who try to approach this by remembering the formulas. In fact, if you would open up the curriculum, you would realize for solving one question, they've used at least 10 to 12 different notations. Okay, so we are, we will try not to use a single formula, but then it means that it's extremely important that you understand why we solve a particular question. We would be solving all the questions without using a formula. It is not okay just to remember the sequence. For example, do this in step one, do this in step two. What is important is you should know why the step one was like this and why the step two is going to be like this. Okay, so your classroom notes are going to be extremely important. These are the learning outcomes that we're looking at. So first learning outcome, and in fact, the first two are kind of more or less same. So while doing this, I'm going to combine them. So it says equity, interest rate, fixed income, and currency forward and future, because the topic is about commitments. So we are not going to have options in this particular reading, how they are priced and how they are valued. Then again, the same thing, no arbitrage value of equity, fixed income and currency forwards and future. So this is no arbitrage value is kind of going to be similar to how we typically price them or how we typically value them. Then in this, these learning outcomes, the focus will shift towards swaps. And this is where my guess is that you might have a little bit of difficulty, especially with currency swaps, which can be a little intimidating at the beginning. So again, this learning outcome is focused on valuation and pricing and the same is the case here. So I'm going to divide this into two sessions. In today's session, we will try to focus on understanding the pricing of and the valuation of forwards and future. And then in the subsequent session, we will have more focus on the pricing and valuation of swaps. Are we okay? So let's get started. So let us say that we have an asset. At this moment, I'm not defining which asset is that, whether it is an equity or commodity. So I'm just calling this as an asset, which is being priced at 100. The current risk-free rate of return is 10%. And we are looking at a forward contract, which is going to have maturity of one year. So in the previous session where we did uh, all the important concepts from CFA level one, which are required for level two, we discussed how to find out no arbitrage forward price. Do you remember that? No arbitrage forward price. How much, how do we calculate that? We will say spot price into one plus RFR raised to T or N, whichever is the time period. So that becomes in this example, 100 into one plus 10% maturity is one year. So raised to one. So 110, this is your no arbitrage forward price. That means when you sign the contract at time zero, this is the price. So I'm writing that this is the price, the price at which value of the contract at inception, help me with this, value of the contract at inception will be zero. So you set the price in such a way that you want to have zero value at the beginning of the contract. Now my question to you is, let us say that we have a forward contract available, scenario one, at a price of 170, or we have a forward contract available at the price of 50. So what I want you to do is, I want you to build up the steps through which we are going to generate the arbitrage. If the forward is overvalued, okay, then the arbitrage that we exploit is called cash and carry. 
and when the forwards are undervalued, then the arbitrage that we use is reverse cache and carry. Okay, so reverse cache and carry. So I'm going to wait for you, since uh, in the curriculum they've spent three to four pages just explaining cache and carry and reverse cache and carry. I'm going to go a little slow. So what I want you to do is build up the steps. Okay, so what actions are we going to take today? And what actions are we going to take one year down the line in both the arbitrage? All right, so I'm going to do cash and carry now. So the author has said in the curriculum that there are two fundamentals rules of arbitrage. In fact, I want you to write them down. Say two fundamental rules for arbitrage. Number one, zero cash investment. Zero cash investment. Which means you are not going to invest a single penny from your pocket. You have to build that arbitrage in such a way that you would make money without investing any money of your own. And number two, zero market risk exposure. Number two, zero market risk exposure. So maybe, so again observe now, I did not say zero risk exposure. Okay, because you might, you might still have trade risk, default risk. But as far as the market risk is concerned, that exposure should be eliminated, it should become zero. So now see how we are going to do this. These are the actions that we will take today. And these are the actions we can take one year down the line. So step number one, we will go and borrow 100 at the rate of 10%. Step number two, using this borrowed amount, we will take long position on the spot. And step number T, step number three, we will take short position on the forward contract. Now the short position one year down the line gives us right and obligation to sell. So one year down the line we are going to sell and we already have the asset with us. So we are going to sell at what price? We are going to sell at the price of 170. But out of that 170, how much do we need to pay to the bank? We need to pay 110. So on this day, the arbitrage profit that you are going to have is 60. Are we okay? Now, in one of the examples, in the CFA text, they have also discussed uh, that that 60 profit is coming to you one year down the line. What can you do today to in fact take some cash home? Are you following what I am trying to say? That 60 profit here, when will you earn that? One year down the line. But you need cash today. You want to exploit some this opportunity and take home some cash. How will you do it? Please do this for me. Say 170 divided by 1.1. 170 divided by 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 54. So what you do is you do not borrow 100. You in fact borrow 154. Are we okay? Now see what happens. You borrow 154. This 54, what is this? This is your home. <laughs> so this 54 you take home. That money is your. Have fun with it. One year down the line, your liability will be taken care of automatically. See how. So you have a long spot, you have a short forward. You have a right and obligation to sell at how much? 170. This time to the bank, you will have to pay 154 into 1.1 which is how much? 170. So your liability one year down the line is taken care automatically. That means that 54 is the profit that you were able to exploit today. Have you understood this? So what I want you to do is write below this, write down an alternate version of arbitrage. Now in this version what you would say is borrow and I want you to show this explicitly 100 plus 54. Borrow 100 plus 54. I hope we are together on this. Then out of that 
154, 54 you will take home. Remaining 100 you will use for long spot. Long spot means buying the underlying asset. And then have a short position on forward. One year down the line, you have a right on obligation to sell at 170. You give 170 to the bank, transaction closed. So assuming you've written this, now my question to you is, what if one year down the line, price of the underlying asset in the spot market has become, let us say, 70. One year down the line, that underlying asset has become $70 in the market. How does that affect my arbitrage? Are you saying there would be no effect? no effect even when the price is 70 yes. yes because no matter what the price is in the market you are going to sell at 170 but what if the price in the market is 250 will you sell at 170 yes. will you sell you will have to this is not an option this is a forward contract it's right and obligation both which means no matter what is the price in the market you will have to sell your asset at the price of 170. Is that okay? Now let's look at how to exploit this arbitrage. So this is what we do today. This is what we will do one year down the line. Step number one, short sell the underlying at the rate of 100. Step number two, deposit 100 in a bank at the rate of tell me 10 percent step number three you will take long position on the forward contract these are the actions you have taken today now long position on the forward contract will give you right and obligation to buy one year down the line and this right and obligation to buy at what level? At what price? 50. So the moment you buy, what do you have with you? You have the underlying stock, or let me, to maintain consistency, let me call this as asset. So now you have a asset with you. Take that asset and give it back to the short seller. So shorting a stock is nothing but borrowing a stock and selling it in the market. Are we together on this? So you take that asset, you give it back to him. So how much bank is going to give you? 110. And how much you needed for buying the asset? 50. So how much is left for yourself? 60. So that 60 is your arbitrage profit. I'm going to repeat this again. You short sold the asset. We made theoretical assumption that selling the asset gave you the cash. You took the cash, you deposited that at the rate of 10%. You have taken long position on forward because it was underpriced. It gave you right and obligation to buy at 50. You bought at 50, you gave it back to the broker from whom you had borrowed. That transaction or liability is closed. But you needed only 50 to buy the asset. Bank give you 110, 60 is your arbitrage profit. Is that okay? Now my question is, what if... We want that profit today, not after one year. What if we do not want to earn that 60 one year down the line, we want to earn that 60 today itself, what can be done? So now 50 divided by 1.1, how much is that? 45. So what you do is you deposit only 45. So deposit only 45. And what do you do with remaining 55? approximately ignoring the decimals. So remaining 55 you will take home. So what will happen after one year that 45 at the rate of 10% will become how much? 50. That 50 you will buy the asset, transaction is closed. So in both the cases, if you want to exploit that arbitrage today, you can. Deposit 45, take 55 home. Here we had borrowed 155. Please write this separately so that you do not get confused when you are revising. Let's look at a little bit of theory. So forward commitments cover forwards, futures and swaps.
what do you think is covered by contingent claims options and options and great derivatives cds that we discussed now we would be looking at the pricing and valuation of forward commitments in this particular reading so this is your first learning outcome we have already seen how do we do arbitrage free pricing and valuation how to distinguish between price and value that we yet to see that what is the difference between price and value so far what we have learned to do is tell me we have learned to price the forward contract so one approach to pricing and valuation is based on the assumption that prices adjust to not to allow arbitrage profit what does it mean in the previous example your spot was 100 rfr was 10 expiry was 1 year what was the no arbitrage price 110 but we saw two scenarios in one scenario the price was 170 in other scenario the price was 50 now when the price was 170 which position did you take on the forward on the forward you were short forward now when the price was 50 what position did you take long forward now short forward do you agree short forward in a way is selling so will you agree that this will increase the supply because there would be a lot of people willing to take short position on the forward contracts yes or no and because there would be a lot of people willing to take short position it will put downward pressure of course now it was a theoretical example the distance was very large you do not see such distance in real life but it will put downward pressure and then eventually that 170 will start converging towards 110 same intuition here here you took long forward so all the people who are trying to exploit arbitrage they will increase the demand and because the demand is increasing it is going to put upward pressure and therefore that 50 price will eventually again converge towards 110 this is what this sentence says that approach to pricing and valuation is based on the assumption that prices will adjust not to allow arbitrage profit only at the price of 110 there is no arbitrage on either of the side so please write this quickly the question is asked that is the price of underlying going to converge i mean underlying going to go towards no, no arbitrage or is the price of forward what do you think we are talking about the price of forward contract so the price of forward contract which should be 110 if it's 170 then there is a clear cut arbitrage and in in our example very large arbitrage so a large number of people will come and on the short side and because so many supply will increase so fastly that the price will quickly go towards 110 here large number of long people will come and they will push the price again towards 110 then arbitrage would be eliminated then there are two fundamental rules this we have already discussed tell me number 1 your net investment has to be zero so if you are going to buy an asset to fund that cash you are going to borrow if you are going to short sell the asset and then to invest that cash i mean to use that cash you are going to invest your net investment zero and second rule is your exposure to market risk is going to be zero Are we okay with this?